nous n'avons pas de pain avec notre thé. Alors que nous mangeons de la brioche. Aujourd'hui, nous prenons du thé avec Marie-Antoinette. Bonjour, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves in Tweed and welcome to another historical tea session. This morning, I'm joining you from my new tea room to have tea with Marie-Antoinette. Now, there's no actual reliable historical evidence that Marie Antoinette even drank tea. However, I stumbled upon a shop called Nina's in Paris that claims to be descended from a cook of Marie Antoinette's who blended a special tea for her based on fruits and flowers and ingredients that were found in the royal gardens at Versailles. And I found that very interesting. So I did a little bit of looking around. And while the Nina's Paris tea is not historically accurate at all, Marie Antoinette would not have drunk Ceylon black tea because large scale production of tea in Ceylon had not started until the 19th century. So I decided to look at some uh, historical references and see if I could come up with a version of Marie Antoinette's tea as imagined by Nina's in Paris, but that adheres a little bit more to historical accuracy. So the first thing I knew I had to fix was the tea base itself. Tea was drunk in France. It was drunk by the wealthier classes as a sort of medicinal herb from the East. It was very expensive and in fact one of the reasons it's believed that tea fell out of favor in France is because around the time of the French Revolution tea was associated very strongly with that aristocratic class that lost favor and so tea as a beverage was kind of a symbol of aristocratic decadence and never really caught on in post-revolutionary France. However, I did find a treatise on tea that was written in the 17th century by a Frenchman. And in discussing where tea comes from, he says that tea comes from China and Japan, and that the very best tea, which of course the queen would have had the very best tea, comes from Hangzhou in China, which happens to be the birthplace and production place of Bong Jing or Dragon Well Tea, which is one of my favorites and I always have it on hand. So we will be basing our Marie Antoinette blend on Dragon Well Tea. So let's brew. So here I have my brewing setup. I have my ingredients back here and I'm going to be brewing in this little glass teapot because it is so attractive. And I've decided to use my Hungarian teacup because Marie Antoinette was actually from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, a daughter of Maria Theresa, and so perhaps she would have enjoyed this little whimsical birds and insects cup at Le Petit Trianon. So first we have our tea. Now this is two spoonfuls of premium grade dragon well tea from Yunnan Sourcing. So we'll put that in our pot. And then the Nina's Paris blend uses roses and apples to flavor it because roses and apples were grown at Versailles in the gardens. So I have some dried apples here and these will also sweeten the tea. Plus apples have been used as a sort of longevity uh, herb or food for a long time. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. And because tea was drunk more as a medicinal beverage, perhaps these medicinal apples would have been added. So we'll add some of these. And then rather than adding rose petals, which are very beautiful, but don't tend to offer a lot of fragrance or flavor, I've decided to scent my tea with rose water. Now, floral waters have been made for centuries, and in fact, I will link some uh, original uh, references that 
describe the making and use of floral waters in both edible and in beauty preparations, and Marie Antoinette would have probably used a lot of floral water. So this rose water would have been a way to scent the tea in the 18th century in a stronger way than using rose petals. Plus, roses were considered a sort of restorative, particularly for the nerves, and someone who had as much going on in her life as Marie Antoinette probably would have needed a restorative now and then in her medicinal tea beverage. And then this is not in the original Nina's blend, but I have decided to also scent the tea with some orange blossom water because the orangery at Versailles is very well known and very extensive. So orange blossom water might have been something that was used to scent food and drink and beauty products in pre-revolutionary France. So we'll scent it with a little bit of orange blossom water. Don't want to use too much of that. And then we'll just add our hot water. Now this is not quite boiling water, which is probably what they would have used in 18th century France to brew tea, which was considered medicinal, so they wanted to extract as much out of the tea as they possibly could. However, this is such a beautiful, delicate tea that I have to believe that the kitchen staff at Versailles would have learned that such a delicate tea would have been better steeped in slightly less than boiling water. So I have some slightly less than boiling water and we'll let that steep. So now our tea has been steeping for a few minutes and I think it's time to taste it. See, it's a lovely, delicate jade color. And I can smell... Oh, I can smell the floral waters. Orange blossom water has become one of my most favorite scents. Orange blossom water is the strongest, it's a very sweet scent, but I can smell the rose water underneath and the kind of nutty greenness of the Dragonwell tea. Oh wow, the apple flavor transfers to the tea surprisingly well. I can taste the dried apple. It's not sweet, it just tastes apple-y. This is, this is really delightful. Perhaps that Marie Antoinette knew a thing or two about her tea. And of course, what better to have with my Marie Antoinette tea than the sweet treat that has become synonymous with her name in French and has been mistranslated in English because when Rousseau claimed that a great princess had once said in response to the peasants decrying their lack of bread, let them eat, he didn't say cake, he said, qu'il mange de la brioche. And brioche is very similar to cake in a time before chemical leaveners were very popular. It was Kind of a sweet, enriched bread, and it happens to be one of my favorites. So let us eat brioche. Thank you for joining me for Tea with Marie Antoinette. I hope you enjoyed this historical tea session, and I hope I'll see you again sometime. Au revoir!